What's up everybody, Tiakim here with So Yard Quilting. Now we've got a very special guest for you, Bev from Flamingo Toes, also another fellow Riley Blake designer. We're gonna have her introduce herself. Hey everybody, my name's Bev of Flamingo Toes and I'm super excited to be here with you guys today. I uh, live near Nashville. I'm almost to the Kentucky border. We're one house away. Me and my husband and my daughter live here and we have a farm and all kinds of fun things. Um, so that's me personally, but I'm also a Riley Blake Designs, fabric designer, uh, pattern designer. I design needle minders, embroidery, cross-stitch patterns, just all the fun things that you can make with your hands. <laughs> okay, well, let, let me pause you right there. So, just so everyone gets it back at home, patterns, needle minders, also cross-stitch, I heard it in there as well. Yes. Which one started first, the cross-stitch, the sewing, the, the producing of crafts? Well, what was your first thing? Um, so if we're talking non-business related, we would have to probably go all the way back to like being a little, little girl and making precious moments cross-stitch patterns, but those weren't anything I designed, right, I right. just made. So um, I started sewing when I was a kid, so um, all that kind of stuff when I, if we, we were super poor and so if I wanted something, I ne needed to make it, which I love that heritage. I love that I had that mindset growing up. Um, about 2012, I started a blog just sharing things that I made, just all kinds of crafty and sewing things, and then sort of developed into the fabric design and pattern design and needle minder design. So so what, what was like the, because 2012, if we go back, you know, mentally back to 2012, yes. the internet wasn't what it is today by any means yet. Blogging right. was probably still pretty new at that moment. What they were? What got you into blogging? Um, it was personal. I my kids were um, hitting like that middle school age mm -hmm. when I didn't need to be um, as hands on with them as they were when they were little. And I was working as a graphic designer, but that was just work. So I wanted something to share of me, things that I had made that was kind of just my own. So I just started it as, I didn't really even think anybody would see it. I just right. wanted like a way to kind of put out there what I had been doing and what I was making and what I loved. Which is, well, it's it's awesome <laughs> because like, blogs were this a uh, huge thing. It was, it was a way for people to express themselves and still is today, right? You have a very active blog still to this day. Yes. So, it was this way to build a community. Since yes. then, we've gotten videos and things like that, which tell us a little about that, because I know that you're a YouTuber as well. So how did that all come up? That sort of happened with COVID, because I had been doing patterns and working with Riley Blake on fabrics and all that kind of stuff for a little while. But once COVID hit, I, I just wanted to connect with people and everybody was at home. So I thought, well, maybe they'd want to stay home and sew with me. Not that I had that like super epiphany or the first person right, that right. thought that, but <laughs> that's why I started. Um, so I just started doing tutorials with my quilt. So I would pick a quilt as a sew along and we would just work through it in however many weeks. And that's how it snowballed. And so for, I pretty much am running four, five sew-alongs a year. Maybe gotcha. that's the highest amount, three or four. Gotcha. But I love it. It's such a fun community. And it is like we're just sewing along together. It's it's so, so fun. Well, I absolutely love that because here at Soya, okay, we're not huge on Block of the Months. We don't sell a lot of Block of the Months. It's not really our forte in, in the industry. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a Block of the Month to hang out with cool people and have a sew-along. Exactly. Right? Like, I, I love that you're taking your patterns, which I actually have a couple of your patterns here with me today. And none of them are this, you're gonna spend 300 hours sewing on one project. You know, you can sew it, you can get it done, and then you can join the next sew along, which I'm sure, are you doing them bi-monthly? Are you doing them, what, what, uh, what are we so doing? So it's more like, yeah, every two to three months, probably. Most of them last about two months long, because we awesome. can break it down into five to, six or eight weeks in fact the quilt behind me is uh one that i just started up on monday so love it 
love it. And it's I mean, a, we're all patriotic here. <laughs> I, I love that too. Like beautiful quilt behind you. I'm guessing you wrote Thank that you. pattern, I would assume, right? Yes, vintage stars. Yes. Love that, love that. Now we've got the patterns here covered and I'm guessing you started designing patterns because you wanted something different in the market or how did we get into the actual designing of your own patterns? It kind of came hand in hand with the fabric design because I was gotcha. designing fabrics and I wanted to use my own patterns and I felt like I, I would be able to design quilt patterns that showed off my fabrics best. And I right. don't mean that like braggy, but of course, you know, you have certain looks and things that you want to highlight in the collection. So that's why I started. Um, so it just developed into developing quilt patterns to go along with my fabric collections. I love that because that, there's a sense of business around that and a sense of creativity, right? That there's two different levels yeah. there. But I've always find, found it weird. There's a lot of designers out there and normally they come from a different industry, like a somebody who's a painter that their fabrics or their paintings have been translated into yes. fabrics or whatever. It's really hard to display those fabrics because the designer, the one who made it, has a mental image of what that's supposed to look like, right? Yeah. And so when you can get the designer to make the fabric and make the project, it just makes sense. I mean, if, I don't know if that's your left or your right there. You got that panel quilt there behind you. you yes, thank uh, you. <laughs> obviously that has a specific design around your pad or your pattern's been designed around the actual fabric itself, which is yeah. amazing to have as well. You started in fabric first then. So how did you come to be a fabric designer? You just called Riley Blake and was like, hey guys, you know? <laughs> Hey guys, I'm awesome. No, I, um, so I had been working from home as a graphic designer. So Love I it. sort of knew the illustrator graphics side of things. And then I been sewing since I was a kid and I was on my blog. And as my blog grew, I became a brand ambassador for Riley Blake. Gotcha. I just felt like they were the design company that fit me the best. Whoa. They felt very family oriented and um, I just loved all the collections that they had. So I started out as an ambassador for them, sewing projects from other people's collections and biting my tongue and wanting to do this, but putting it off for, I don't know, at least a couple of years. And gotcha. finally just got the nerve up and put together a collection that I thought was amazing. And I emailed it and they're like, oh, we like you. Right. We like your style. We don't like any of this. So gotcha. <laughs> worked with me and was just amazing. Like, yeah. I feel like I've changed and grown so much as a designer working with Riley Blake. Like it's all my own designs, but tweaks and things like that to sort of help develop my own style, yeah. if that even makes sense. Well, and so. that is something very unique that I have found with Riley Blake themselves is that it's a collaborative effort more than it is a, you know, I'm Flamingo Toes or I'm So Yeah and this is what we do. It's more of like, hey guys, think about it this way. Or maybe you want to try something like this, which I yes. love because the more people, the more eyeballs on something, the better it can become. Like it's, right. it, it really is. Right. And I feel like my collections still turn out 100% me, just maybe better. Right. <laughs> if that makes any well, sense. Uh, when, so we, we have a new line coming out with Riley Blake as well, as you know. And, and yeah, I love uh, it. I, I was just cracking up because when we went, we sent in our artwork and all that, they're like, listen, we love everything about it. Same kind of deal that, that you went through. And uh, they were like, this is too much color to print. And we're like, what What do you mean? That's that's the new concept to us because we have always been digital printers. And they're like, yeah, if, oh, we just, yeah. if we just plucked out one or two colors, we could do this all on screens, keep the pricing down for everyone as well. We're like, absolutely. And they showed us how you can get the same print, same colors, just making these tiny little tweaks in it, which is, yeah. Amazing, amazing thing to have. You've been with Riley Blake now for a couple of years and you said something that you were a brand ambassador. What exactly does yes. that mean? Cause that kind of was your crossover point into Riley Blake. Right, yes. So it basically meant that I worked with their fabrics. Like they would send me somebody's collection or I would say, oh, I love mm -hmm. this collection. They would send it to me and I would make a project. So I would share it on my own website and then they would share it on their social media as well. So it was definitely a partnership in that I was helping promote a collection, but they were also helping promote me and my projects. So mm -hmm. it was it was definitely good for both of us. This is something that we get asked all the time because we're, we're kind of odd. We're always kind of in an odd situation because we're both a retailer, a designer, and brick and mortar. So we kind of see all the fronts of these uh, people, right? And uh, yes. people ask us all the time on, how do you become a designer? I've got this collection, how do I become a designer? I believe the way that you've done it is like the way to do it. 
you start getting a social media following, you start aligning yourself a little closer to a manufacturer, and then you ask them. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. It's not yeah. an overnight sensation. It's not when we say something, it's like, oh guys, we're now a Riley Blake designer. It's like, oh my goodness, it's so awesome that you guys just signed that real quick. It's like, no, no, that was six months ago <laughs> and now we're now announcing it. There's time involved in these things that everyone yes. at home needs to You've been working on this for two years. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, like we, we got signed, no, they approved us in October or November and now it's March and now we finally can say, hey, we actually right. have something, right? It takes time, guys. And then the collection time. won't come out for several more months. Until October, weird. yeah, until <laughs> yeah. October, a full year turnaround yeah. time on that. Which, yeah. as a quilter, we don't ever see that, right? We only hear about, you know, your new line that's coming out in three months or two months or whatever that line's right. coming out. But you already have another one in the bag for next year coming out too. So, like so. Three, three more. Oh, oh, you're way better over else. the next couple of years. Yeah, it's you, really you, weird. And then you, it comes out, and you're like, "Oh yeah, I like this." Right? I don't remember this Who made this? Right? Oh, right. Oh, we, she was super clever. Right. I love that. <laughs> so you ended up with Fabrics for Fry Blake. Love the company, right? And then yes. patterns came along with that. Yeah. And then needle minders just right after that, or. Yeah, so I had done embroidery before. I've always done stitching. Um, that's kind of my relaxing. Like I love to sew, but mm -hmm. embroidery kind of feeds me. I don't know if gotcha. that makes sense, yeah, but yeah, like yeah. that's really where my um, relaxation comes in. So I've always done embroidery patterns. Um, so along with the fabrics, a couple years after I, I had um, thought it would be a great idea to make needle minders that kind of coordinated mm -hmm. with the fabrics and my embroidery patterns as well. So. Around I, all that same time. Yeah. I find that to be so true in the sense of designers, right? Anyone who designs. Mm -hmm. As a customer or as a quilter, we think about like and like romanticize the idea of like, wow, she's a designer, he's a designer. Yeah. It's also a job, right? We, we forget yeah. that for, <laughs> for the design side of things of that we work, we produce these things. And then a lot of times as it has come for us, quilting became our not only hobby it became our job which right. now you need to go get a different hobby most of the time right you have to have some peace of mind somewhere to go or right. cross stitch or whatever it may be and you'll find that yeah. to be with most designers like most designers have a side thing that they do that they really <laughs> love because keeps they, our sanity well and we try not to talk about it right because we don't want to commercialize it it's like guys where no. our life has already been commercial we want we want this right. other thing which is awesome same same realm here changing gears a little bit in fabric you do primarily quilting cottons yes. right is there yeah. any changes that we might see from you are we going to see a cross stitch line come out from you by chance or maybe some canvases or anything like that any other substrates that we're going to see possibly maybe a little dipping of the toe into some batiks, but you Fun. didn't hear that from me. That was totally a secret Fun. and I didn't share it at all. Right, right. <laughs> batiks, batiks is a new world for Riley Blake too, it which is. is. It was totally new for me too. I've never really been my thing until they mm -hmm. started doing them. And I felt like, oh wow, it just felt like a different take. So you have cotton yeah. design, right? Where you're doing in full color. What you see is what you get. Yes. But teak designs all black and white. Yes. So how do you approach that differently between, you know, I'm thinking about doing batiks versus, you know, what, what you've already done, which is those quilting cottons. It's a process I'm still learning. Like I'm very much in the beginning design part of it. So I'm just now working on the black and white designs, like you said, and then we'll take those and figure out there's just, I guess, so many different ways you can get the color onto the fabric and then do bleachings and different different kinds of things to it even after you've printed it. So it's still something I'm really learning, but I'm excited to learn it. It's, it's Absolutely. really fun and different. Well, and I love that because even as designers, take name any designer out there that's even the mega ones, yeah. we're all still learning there's always a oh, new yeah. process a new technique a new well and technology is advancing at such a fast rate yeah. that things change too over over the years well it's amazing for you too that you're keeping up with it that you're changing with the seasons and learning these things which we commend you for that that's awesome <laughs> with that as well we're going to change gears here a little bit to 
more of the family life here. So you said that yeah. it's you, your husband, and a daughter at home, I believe? Yeah, so our daughter just, she had been living in Virginia. Um, she's just moved back home in Jan January and she works for uh, me now. So oh. <laughs> that's really been fun. So she's living with us for right now, but gonna move out back and still work for me, hopefully. Gotcha. But it's been a really fun transition. And then I have a son and his wife also that live in Boston. Does she show interest in the quilting world or is it just a job? She is, she's <laughs> a little <laughs> bit of interest. Let's put it that way. She's uh, started cross stitching, which is really okay. fun. And she's super invested in the business, which I love. So she's very much invested in the business side of everything and kind of dipping her toes into some of the other, like just for fun for her. <laughs> okay, and is this like a mother-daughter activity? Like you guys sit down, cross stitch, talk, ha have a glass of whatever, or is it just her <laughs> on, on her own? No, she's doing it on her own. <laughs> okay, awesome. How did you get her, because people ask us this all the time of like the younger generation, right? We always throw that out there. Oh, yeah. Was it just leaving her alone and she found this? Or was it like, hey, you should try this? Like, how did you introduce this to her in a way that she felt like she should try it? Well, I never really wanted to push anything on her. She grew up with me sewing, just like I grew up with my mom sewing. Yeah, so yeah. it was always a factor in the house. But I think it was, it came from her own because her initial project is she wanted to make a quilt for a friend. So that we did together. We got, she picked out the fabric and the design and we kind of did all that together. Same with the cross stitching. Like she's known I've done that for years. I had a few kits that I wasn't going to use or that I picked up at some time or the other. Mm -hmm. And so I passed them on to her for if she wanted to try them. And so that's what she's kind of picked up on her own and done. So it's well, more like she grew up immersed in, to, in it. Right, <laughs> right. Well, and you said something very, very key there for me, and this is something that we talk about often on our shows and stuff like that, of if you want to get the younger generation into this hobby or into any of the handmade hobbies, all you have to do is just wait one second and they're gonna say something like, I would yeah. really like to make whatever. It could be a yeah. blanket, a bag, a whatever. It doesn't matter what it yeah. is. And then you said the perfect thing. Then you helped her achieve the goal, her goal. Not yeah. not imposing the quilting onto somebody else. It's like, right. leave them alone and they'll say something. And then that's the moment you get to act and show people your yeah. art or your heart. Because if you push it, then they're going to just turn the other way, yeah. I yeah. feel like. We, yeah, I totally agree with you. We, we do these classes here in store probably once a month, maybe once every two months, where it's all apparel classes. 100% apparel, um, shorts, shirts, blouses, whatever. And we get all these amazing creative people in, into the building. And it's always so funny to me that the very first ones that come in, a lot of times are like, no to quilting. Like, no, that's that's beneath me or whatever the, the <laughs> feeling is, right? And then by week four or five of them coming in to these, these events, they're like, you know, I might pick up a yard of that or I might pick up a yard of that. You know, it's <laughs> when we think of quilting, we only think of my grandma sitting in a rocking chair with a needle instead right. of all the many options that are out there. So give people time. Right. They always find their way back to a handmade craft, in my opinion, yes. obviously. So, and you live in Tennessee, almost Nashville. Tennessee. Right? Uh, I'm about 40 minutes from Nashville. Okay. I'm one house from Kentucky. So we're just kissing Kentucky. Right. <laughs> wow. You said you yeah. live on a farm slash ranch. Yeah, we have 15 acres. We just moved here a year ago. We've always wanted land. And so we found this place, built our house on it. Um, we've had it, somebody else farming it for the last year or so, but we're branching out into cattle this year. So I'm going to be a cattle farmer. <laughs> Fun. So, so we're doing cattle here and is there anything else already there? We've got chickens, we got pigs, we got anything No, that? not chickens yet, but chickens will happen this year. And awesome. other than that, it's two dogs and a cat, but they awesome. don't really that, that, work for us. That, <laughs> they don't that, earn their keep. That is so <laughs> awesome. Chickens. Once you start doing, having chickens, they just... A million of them is what happens. You I just don't... don't realize how cute they are until oh. you have them. And then they're hilarious and funny. And you start off with like two chickens and like, what's another two, you know, and then you have 14 chickens and I'm a family of five. We get, you know, 15 eggs a day. You know, it's chicken math. It just how it works, yeah, right? right? It is. Now <laughs> going into quilting. Yes. People say it's extremely hard to write patterns because there's a lot of math, a lot of shapes that have to line up here. 
how difficult do, do you find it? Or is there any tips or tricks that you want to give everyone on how to do this? Yeah, I, um, I'm not super strong in the math department. And so for me, my trick is not trying to do the entire process by myself. Like my patterns are all my own designs. I design them all and I do write the patterns, but then I send them to at least one tech editor and several testers. And I just need as many eyes on it as possible because I know what I intended, but it doesn't always turn out magically perfect. Well, <laughs> well I really sink at math. Especially yeah. in written words, like you can say, make a half square triangle and the user be like, what's a half square triangle? Go ahead. That's Derek. why I want my testers to be everywhere from beginners to super experts too, because maybe I, the way I explained it, isn't, I mean, that's the way I understand it, but that isn't the way maybe everybody or most people would understand it too. So it's, it is so true because there's different methods in this industry, right? If you're making half square triangles, you can cut five inch squares to get four and a half inch half square triangles. You can cut 10 inch squares and get four and a half inch triangles. Lots of different ways to get the same piece. However, there's only one way to assemble it to make it the finished right. project, right? So lots of ways to get there. Only one way to assemble at, at the end of the day, which right. is awesome. How did you, cause you started in the fabric world, which is a little bit backwards. Most people start in the <laughs> pattern world and cross the other direction. So because of that, were there ever errors? Like, did you ever make the fabric collection, write the pattern, and then it was just wrong at the end of the pattern? Yeah. 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 So, and I wasn't not designing quilt patterns. I wasn't necessarily, I was doing like freebie stuff on gotcha. their website. Which okay. So you do come from a pattern background. It's a little bit easier to fix. So yeah. So I was doing that kind of thing. So I wasn't completely um, unaware, but yes, I have had errors and, and you feel awful because people are, you know, spending their money on your fabric and don't want to make mistakes in cutting or, yeah, you yeah. know, yeah, so, oh, of course, yeah. I well, mean, nobody's perfect, right? It's, yeah, well, even designers, quilters, the best influencers, the best everything, they're still people, still make mistakes. Yes. It, it's life still. Now, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is kind of a, a someone's got to talk about it, so we might as well ask the question. <laughs> you woke up one day and you're like, I'm going to start a blog, Flamingo Toes. Yes. How, how do we get to Flamingo Toes exactly? <laughs> and then transferring that over into... Riley Blake in the end. So when I started my blog, I had followed, you know, crafty sewing blogs. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of them were sewing with Susie or whatever. Right. Um, and I didn't want to be pigeonholed. So I knew right off the bat when I made my name, I didn't want it to be anything that meant I only did this one thing. Gotcha. Because um, I didn't want to do that. So I used to collect flamingos in college a long okay, time okay. ago. Um, it was sort of forced on me by mentioning I like flamingos and then everybody went, here's all the flamingo things. Gotcha. Um, but they're fun and quirky and cute. And so I decided to pick flamingos as the main part of the name. And then just looking at what we could pair with it, my husband was looking at flamingos and he's like, you know, they actually have toes. And I'm like, well, that's weird and quirky and it would probably stick in people's minds. Right. So. And we also wanted the blog to feel, I wanted my blog to feel fun and quirky and maybe you'd take something away that you'd remember from. So it felt like kind of that good transition. I did think after a few years when it was turning more into a business, do I need to change that? <laughs> Does right. it not professional? But I'm telling you, it's fun. And I get photos from people that are in the t airport. I think it's the Tampa airport that has like a 50 foot flamingo right. in there or something. And people will text me photos or, send them on messenger and say, Hey, I saw this and thought of you. Well, I mean, how great is that? Like, I can't, <laughs> I love it now. So I do include my name in case anybody's looking for Beverly McCullough for things because yeah, yeah. that's on my fabric and things like that. But, but I do love the, the fun quirkiness of Flamingo Toes. <laughs> well, and just all the audience here that, that watches these things are just like, isn't that what the industry is about is having a good time, yes. right? Like it it, <laughs> people take some things way too seriously. Like it's not, you know, years and years of market research or right, anything like right. that. Yes. So since you're a Riley Blake designer here, putting you into the hot seat here a little bit, oh. obviously you're going to pick your fabric over everyone else's, right? I mean, you're, you're yes. okay. <laughs> it, it's fair. Is there a particular designer that you've grown to fall in love with some of their prints? Or is there a particular pattern company that you've seen is there anyone else in the Riley Blake community that you're like, I love their stuff? 
Well, that's that is hot seat ish. I, I know. I will honestly tell you, I love everybody. Like our group is so. I mean, our I say group because that's Wait. how I think of like Riley Blake is this group of family, and um, you know, every year we have Garden of Quilts in September, and it's like a little mini family reunion. We get together and we hang out as much as we can at night, and we I just love these people so. Yes, but I will highlight a few um, and say what I love about them, if yeah, that's okay. Yeah, well, you you, you can't not love Riley Blake designers. The, right. the, they're right. all amazing designers, but we also yes. lean one way or the other, so go, go for it. So I love um, one of my good friends, Amanda, Jedi Craft Girl, Amanda mm -hmm. Niederhauser. She has a lot of fun uh, designs. Her daughter does illustrations for her, and they're very cute hand sketched um and i just love her fabric she has a top, really top fun sure. collection right. coming out in august so I, i'm really excited about that it's called stay wild so that's fun and she's a really good pattern writer too so i love her i'm not super into modern quilts but fran gulick and i'm trying to think off the top of my head what her company name i think it's cotton and joy mm -hmm. i should know that um she does really fun modern patterns and her collections are gorgeous like her art is just stunning um, Christopher Thompson isn't designing a whole lot anymore, but his basic Which blossom is still out there. And I absolute shame that he's not designing as much as he should. Right. Like, know, in my opinion, he, he was, <laughs> he was like one of the very first people, like when Riley Blake first came to us, cause again, we do brick and mortar and online yes. and all that. I remember seeing, you know, Lori Holt. I saw some of, some of your stuff as well, right about that same time. And Christopher Thompson stuff came out and I was like, this is kind of our vibe. It's got a bright color palette. So he was yeah. actually one of the first basics we ever picked up from, from Riley Blake. So it's a shame. If you're watching this, Christopher. Christopher, come on. <laughs> it, it's a shame. It's a shame. Uh, go, go ahead there. <laughs> but he's got the miniatures now, which I'm a little bit obsessed with too. Uh -huh. And I'm not even into miniatures, but I'm like, he posts something and I'm like, maybe I should make that too. Right? I, <laughs> right. In all my spare time. <laughs> Absolutely. Even the best designers out there, guys, use their products because they believe in it and they love it and all that yes. but it doesn't mean they're not going to walk into a quilt store and find something that they're that talks to them or they're like i right. love exactly. that or inspiration we think that a lot of people just come up with things out of their head they're inspired by something most of the time they oh, just yeah. went to the zoo and now they have a safari <laughs> line or they right. their mom's a beekeeper now they have a bee quilt like there is some form of inspiration behind everything or they moved onto a farm so they're building like their fabric collections now have barns on them <laughs> right you need a really good barn quilt so you gotta make the fabric for your really big right barn. exactly this is how my brain works exactly <laughs> exactly and we just all have to understand that in these moments in time is really what we're purchasing when we're buying fabric. We're not purchasing a you know red fabric. We're purchasing someone's story a lot of times, someone's joy or someone else's just feeling in in, in life. It is a of where we are now, and we're sharing parts of ourselves. So I love that. I love that you said that. Love that. Love that. A couple more questions for you before we end this thing here. Just a couple rapid fire fire things. Do okay. you have a preferred sewing machine? Uh, yes, my main machine is, and I'm looking at it, I'm pointing at right. it in case you can't see it. It's a Baby Lock Crescendo. Awesome. And I love that machine. Awesome. <laughs> Favorite thread? Um, mostly Orofil. Mostly Orofil, okay. Good, good thread. It's, yeah. It is a good quality thread. Your ride or die, the notion you have to have? A needle minder. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. Right. Just for stitching. Like, I use them all the time for even, like, holding my embroidery stitches and, um, I have one by my sewing machine if I have like a hand needle or something like that that I need for sewing. So okay. all the time. Okay. Wash pre-wash fabric, don't pre-wash fabric. Don't rewash fabric. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm I, with I'm you. I want that like post quilt crinkly thing happening. So I, I, I try to explain that to people of like the crinkle when you wash it, that's what I'm going for here. <laughs> yes, that's the goal is the crinkle. <laughs> so if we're not doing the pre-wash, are we starching? No, I do a okay. little bit of like a light starch with, I don't know if you're familiar with flatter. It's okay. So yeah. yeah. So I do a little bit of that while I'm sewing, but I'm not like the hardcore pre soak your fabric and starch. So gotcha. Starch. Gotcha. Gotcha. Last two random questions here for you. Okay. So Neil Minder's your favorite here. Okay. Yes. Best <laughs> marking tool on the market. Oh, um, well, so my favorite is a little bit niche, um, and it's by Sublime Stitching, but it's a iron-on transfer embroidery pen. 
And so I use it I for what work just embroidery, but I love that thing. It's So is it a wash away? Is it a... It's an iron on permanent transfer. So if you're doing embroidery, you like, you trace the back of it and then you iron it onto your project and you have a super clean, really fine point and you just stitch over it and you leave it there. And it just is under all your threads, so. I have no idea what you're talking about, but I'm gonna go find that out after this because that sounds interesting. I just don't understand it, okay? Okay. <laughs> and then lastly here, I just lost my train of thought, which is fantastic for this. <laughs> With R Riley Blake, in regards to R Riley Blake, in yeah. your opinion, if you had to sum up Riley Blake, how would you sum it up as a business or how, how would you try to describe the feeling that you get from Riley Blake? It's a family. Just it's a family like that. that runs a business. It's just like that, isn't it? We are so big on that of just, if you're the customer buying Riley Blake, if you're the designer, if you are just the person who happens to use a Riley Blake fabric for the lining of your bag, you're part <laughs> of the family. And that's really how they look at it. I've seen the owners of the company get shown these projects that have their fabrics in it and they are just as excited if it's mixed in with everyone else or if it's just oh, Riley yeah. Blake. And that's what we absolutely love. But with that, we appreciate you and all your time today just talking with us, hanging out here. But before you go, can you please let us know what your your uh, Facebook handles and YouTube handles are? That way, if anyone wants to jump over and subscribe to your platforms, that they can. Yes. So on Instagram and Facebook, if you just look up Flamingo Toes, that's me. And then on YouTube, I'm Bev R. McCullough because somebody stole Flamingo Toes. But if you go to my website, FlamingoToes.com, and up at the top, I have all those things linked to for you. So you can just awesome. go straight there. Awesome. <laughs> Guys, at home, make sure you like and subscribe both here and to Bev. She's got a lot of good content out there and her patterns are amazing. Also, just a friendly reminder, that in a couple days from now, we're gonna be selling all of her patterns and her needle minders, along with, you're gonna start seeing them on soyaquilting.com as well and in store in the brick and mortar. So with that, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Guys back home, we'll see you on the next one.